Everybody. Welcome to the River Franklin Park online worship experience. I'm Pastor Mark Helsel. I'm the campus pastor here and we're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our worship service. These are definitely different days, aren't there? I'm sitting in an empty church building, which is very rare uh, to, be, to be in. 
and it's been different for me after 30 years of ministry never quite seen anything like this but we're glad that you're here we hope you're going to enjoy this online experience hey one thing you could do in these times is one simple thing is simply invite someone to watch this service if you're streaming live right now on facebook live or youtube uh, just invite them to come or on Facebook Live. You can do a watch party, post it to your page. Uh, however you've joined us today on Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, we're glad you have. And if you're not watching this live, uh, enjoy. Enjoy this and watch it on at your leisure. But we're glad that you're here. We hope this is a blessing to you. We hope that this helps you get through this time, this crazy time in our culture. Uh, I'd like to do something as we begin our worship service here uh, this morning. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you would join me in the Lord's Prayer. When we go through times of crisis, times of difficulty, I find it helpful to go back to the things that you learned in the beginning. And this prayer is a prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, not as a rote prayer, not as something we're just supposed to spout off, but has deep meaning about how we seek and and, and find uh, God and how we search for Jesus, even in the midst of um, trials and hardships. So if you would join me for a moment in the reading of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everything seems different now. Our workplaces, our routines, the things we're in the habit of doing, the office, the coffee shop, the simple things we took for granted, they're all canceled. But what about the other things we're so blessed with? The ones still just right around the corner or down the hall, sitting at the dinner table and tucked into bed every night. But what if it's only you? And you, maybe for the first time, discover that you are not alone and that there is no distance in prayer. And there is no true isolation when you can speak to God, our Father. You discover you can seek with your heart and find a hope in the midst of uncertainty, a hope uncontainable, a hope to be shared with the whole world. These are the promises of our God. That we can always find hope in trusting in Him. Hope is contagious. Was arrested and my life 
You are perfect in all of your ways. 
hardly speak peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you go deeper still as you go deeper still as you go deeper still into love love, love your good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. Lord, we thank you for the truth of those words that you are our good Father, that you have been our protector, our provider, our healer. We ask you to remind us of those things, to remind us of your love so that we can live expressing love to others, the love that you have given us. We pray these things in your name. Hi everyone, it's Pastor Matt Wrights here. I just wanted to take a moment and hopefully provide a distraction to you from all the negativity and the chaos that's going on all around us and to remind you of something that we can do right now that will actually make a very positive difference. I think that every encounter in our life, especially what we're going through right now, should provide an opportunity for us to draw closer to Jesus. And rather than thinking that we always know what's best for us and the way to do things, I think that we need to stop and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us on the path that's meant specifically for each and every one of us. As we continue to go through this time right now, that is more difficult than maybe we've ever experienced. I want to encourage you to continue to allow your light to shine for Jesus and be a positive example. Whatever you do, though, don't distance yourself from God. He loves you more than you know. Go to Him because God will never give up on you. I think one of the greatest tragedies in our life today is when prayers go unanswered because they go unasked. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, it says that Jesus told his disciples a story or a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. So that's what I want to focus on today, prayer and how important that is. Don't let your past prayers, those ones that seem to go unanswered, don't allow those things to linger in your mind and hinder you or hinder anybody else. Even when we do our very best, our lives are still marked with flaws and failures because we're imperfect humans. But when we trust God, the one who created our entire universe out of chaos, he has the power to take our lives in his very own hands and with his own wonderful and perfect touch, make our lives into something more beautiful than we could imagine. God has a wonderful plan for your life, and he has a mountain that he wants you to claim. He has a goal that he wants you to reach and a purpose that he wants you to fulfill. It's not always going to be easy. But with God helping us, we can reach our goals, we can claim our mountains, and we can eventually pass those things on to future generations so that they can benefit from our wise choices today. Prayer, it absolutely has the power to make a positive difference. And I want to encourage you today, be a difference maker. Pray. It makes a difference. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your church. And whether you agree with them or not, pray for your government, your local offices, all the way up to the president. Everyone needs prayer. Pray for those also who are still out there working and possibly exposed to this virus. Humble yourself. 
listen to what God is speaking to you specifically during this difficult time. Please know that I am praying for you and I want you to stay healthy and make wise choices. As we learn to do life together a little bit differently, probably, hopefully it's going to be a better and more positive life that will ultimately glorify God. Amen. Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the worship service here at the River Franklin Park. Again, I'm Pastor Mark Helsel. Welcome. Glad that you're with us. Let me take a few moments to give some announcements, but before we do that, why don't we take a moment to greet each other? So wherever you're at, maybe you're laying in bed on your couch uh, with friends, with family. If you're by yourself, give yourself a big, huge hug. So just give somebody a hug next to you, a high five. It may be a noogie, something like that. Uh, I'll give you a high five or maybe a little elbow, but glad you're here. Glad you're with us. Thanks for doing that. I know the introverts, you're loving this, right? Because you're home maybe just with a few people, you love this. Us extroverts, we need, to, we need to get around people and enjoy this time together. So let me give you a couple announcements that'll help things for you uh, go smoothly over these weeks that we're going to be online. And if you are watching this, obviously you know that we're online, but we are, we are streaming live on Sunday mornings at 9.30 and 11, not the 9.30 times a new time. So at 9.30 and 11, we will be on both Facebook and YouTube. So you can watch either place or at any time during the week or any time during today, you can go back and watch uh, on either of those places. It'll be saved after the service. So 9, 30, and 11 streaming at the River Franklin Park and also at GoRiverChurch.com, our website, GoRiverChurch.com. And you can find out a lot of information there on GoRiverChurch.com, just about who we are as a church, our pastors, um, and different things like that, just information that you might find helpful. Now, I gotta give you some information about Easter 2020. As you know, Easter's coming up on April 12th, and uh, we are not gonna be celebrating Easter in this building, but we have some exciting news for you. We are going to celebrate Easter in our parking lot because we are doing drive-in church. It's being done all over the country. It's not original to us but drive in church. So you're gonna be able to pull up in our parking lot on Easter morning at 11 o'clock is our service. We're gonna have a live band outside and we're also going to be broadcasting on FM to a channel on your FM radio. And we're gonna do a bunch of creative stuff, but it'll be a way for us on Easter to come together without actually coming together. But we're, we're excited about it. It's gonna be a great time. We hope that you'll invite others to come we want to fill our parking lot with cars. Don't worry, we're not getting out of our cars, but a great time to worship God on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, April 12th, 11 o'clock. Remember that April 12th, 11 o'clock, we will start. Now, all of that is going to happen if the stay at home uh, ban is lifted. And so here in Allegheny County, if the ban is lifted, we will gather in the parking lot. If it's not, we will continue online as usual. And we will also stream online that day, uh, the outside events, but we hope you'll come and invite friends to come and be a part of Drive-In Church or Drive-In Easter. It's gonna be a great time. I hope you'll join us on Easter Sunday. Hey, let me give you a couple other quick announcements. This is usually the time where we do our giving as a church. And if you're watching this and you're a regular attender, we encourage you to give online at our app at PushPay. If you uh, would like to give towards our church and you're not a regular attender, you can also do that through PushPay. Just look up the River Church. You'll see our logo that you see in the back, and that's how you know that you're giving to the right place. It takes just a few moments to set up, or you can mail a, ch a check here to the church, and our address is uh, able to be found on our website. Hey, finally, if you know of anybody who has a need at this time, uh, feel free on any of our platforms, Facebook or, or our website, uh, email, to send in an email. If you know somebody that has a need or if you have a need during this time and we can help meet that, we would love to as a church. Uh, we are strategizing and planning as a church how we're going to meet needs in our community uh, and here at our church as they arise. And so please don't hesitate, send us an email, drop me an email. If you need anything, please let me know and I will try to meet your need. 
Hey, we are so glad that you've joined us. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. Let's continue to worship here at the River Franklin Park.
no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Lord, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us. Lord, we think that we can still gather together when we're not physically together, but that we can still be a community. We can still come together as your church. Please bless this time. Speak to us through the words of the sermon. Allow us to be changed and moved. We pray this in your name. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to week two of our series called Rescue. I'm Pastor Mark Hell, so glad you're with us. I'm here in um, Beaver Falls at an old rundown uh, water park. It's an old rundown uh, wave pool. Thought it was appropriate for uh, what we're talking about today. You know, last week we looked at how God rescues outsiders, and today we're looking at rescue for desperate people. Um, Beaver Falls has been kind of an area that went through some desperate, desperate times, and and um, this was one of the casualties of those, of those times. And I think it's an appropriate place to talk about desperation, talk about what it's like to, to be desperate. I mean, these are desperate times, and desperate times, as they say, call for desperate measures. And maybe some of the things that we're looking at today. Uh, for you might be a desperate measure, but is a measure that you need to take. Uh, we're all feeling kind of off kilter, kind of off balance. I wanted to share with you, um, my boss, Dean, uh, one of our pastors, I wanted to share with you uh, an email that he wrote or a response that he gave to somebody this week uh, when they asked him how he was doing. And I think you'll you'll resonate with this. He wrote this. He said, thanks, Dave. Mondays are never good gauge for me, but yesterday was good. I'm feeling well, just slow, like I need my coffee to kick in. It feels like my spirit is confused. Stay in, work, rest, get projects done, eat, watch TV. I should be doing something. Don't go out, exercise, read, clean up, organize, catch up, sleep. None of it seems to satisfy my soul. Weird. And then... All the do I have enough questions begin. Do I have enough toilet paper, food, money, patience, energy, ammunition, safety, gas, latex gloves, retirement, parishioners, frozen food, time. Again, even an endless supply of all things will never satisfy. I think a lot of people are kind of feeling that way these days where they're they're just living with kind of it feels like this low grade desperation kind of like we talk about low grade fevers but they're living with these low grade desperation and everybody kind of feels like they're in the same boat and maybe today as you watch this you're you have some desperation in your life maybe it's physical desperation or emotional desperation or spiritual desperation or financial desperation as i know a lot of people are worried about their finances right now i mean desperation is a feeling that a lot of people have throughout their life and at different times and for different reasons. In fact, David Thoreau, the great writer, said it this way. He said, most men live lives of quiet desperation and go to their grave with the song still in them. That's a really sad commentary, isn't it? That most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with their song still in them and again we all feel desperate at times and the question is not that whether we're going to feel desperate the question is what do we do with it when it hits us what do we do when we are desperate 
And desperation can either drive you to a solution. It can either drive you to a solution or desperation can plummet you deeper into despair. And so today, you know, we're going to look at a story here in a moment where this person could have either let his desperation plummet him into uh, despair or he chose to seek out a solution. His desperation pushed him to a solution. And so I want to introduce you to a character in the scripture. Um, we only know him as a man with leprosy. And let me tell you a little bit about leprosy in that day. When you had leprosy in the time of Jesus, you were basically given a death sentence. I mean, you were the height of desperation. You were not going to recover from this disease. And this disease was not only physical, but the disease was also emotional, relational. It cut you off from everybody. It made you the ultimate social distancer. Everyone was going to distance from you, and you were actually lawfully expected to distance yourself from everybody else. And in fact, at times, people would wear a bell, and they would ring a bell to let people know they were coming nearby if they had leprosy, and they would yell out, unclean, unclean, unclean. And so the story that we're about to look at is in Luke chapter 5. It's actually in three of the four Gospels. The writers tell us this very important story about a desperate man with leprosy. And this is how it goes in Luke chapter 5, verse 12. It says, While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. And you know what? I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to show you how this might have played out. We're going to show you a clip from a great series called The Chosen. We showed a clip last week, and we're encouraging you to watch this with your family. Watch it individually. Uh, You can download the app on your phone. But this is a powerful scene of how this might have played out back in the time of Jesus when we see this man come to Jesus in this very powerful scene. Take a look. To spoil this beautiful day or anything, huh? (laughs) Come on. It's a leper. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 you you cannot. It's disease. You. Please. Please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, if you can make me clean, only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you could do. I know you can heal me if you are willing. I am willing. (laughs) Be cleansed. Thank you. I I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What can I what can I ever do? No. Do not say anything to anyone. You don't seek your own honor? Please just do me this one thing. But what do I tell people? 
Go. Show yourself to the priest. Let them inspect you and see that you are cleansed. Make the proper offering in the temple as Moses commanded. And go on your way. <laughs> Who has an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. Green is definitely your color. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> Wow, I love that clip. It's just amazing to see Jesus interact with this man, his compassion, his heart for him, his desire to, 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 to bring him to a place of wholeness and completeness. And I, what I love about this clip is that it, there's a man in this story who is desperate. This is desperation. A man who is incredibly desperate and a God who is willing. And so when you take a man who is desperate, a person who is desperate, and in need and crying out, and a God who is willing, when you put those two things together, that's when the miracle can happen. That's when miracles happen in our lives. That's when the miracle happened for the man who was with leprosy. When you take a willing heart, a willing person, a person who is, is searching, a person who is reaching out, a person who is desperate, and you put that with a willing God, then you see a miracle. There's actually both people in this story who are willing if you think about it the leper is willing to take a chance he's willing to take a chance on god he's willing to to reach out and he's willing to go after jesus he's willing to come to him and so there the leper is also willing and there's jesus who is willing but i love the question that the leper asks he says are you willing and and that's a great question and i think you know it, it hits at the character of god and a lot of us might be asking that question right now. Like, God, are you willing? Are you willing to meet us in our sicknesses, in our desperation, in our diseases? Are you willing? And it, and it really does hit at the character of God. And I can tell you as a pastor for all of these years that uh, when people have these kind of questions, like, why didn't God do this? Or why did God allow this? Or, or why didn't God uh, fix everything immediately? And where was God when I needed him? And and I can honestly tell you that I don't know all the answers to those things. I don't know all the answers. I don't know why some people are healed and others aren't. And I know that there are people who have asked for things and prayed for things. And to be honest with you, I'm one of them who have prayed for things and they never came to fruition. And I was desperate. But there were some things that were revealed to me in the midst of those questions and not knowing uh, all of those answers. One of those things is this, is that some of our desperation is self-made that we do create some of our own desperation and through some of the choices that we made or some of the actions that we've taken we've caused desperation in our lives and so if that's you if you have you know maybe caused some desperation in your own life then then you also need to turn to god and 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 to seek his forgiveness and to seek his truth but so we've created some of our own desperation and we've sought out maybe bad solutions to fix them. I mean, this man was desperate. He had leprosy. He was desperate to fix that. And he reached out for the right solution. But for some of us, we've caused desperation in our lives. And maybe we've reached out to the wrong solutions. And those solutions that we've reached for, the things that we've tried to heal our desperation, literally made things worse. And, 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 uh, and so if that's you, you know, I pray that you would, again, look at your own life. And maybe there's some choices or actions that you've taken that have increased uh, the level of desperation in your life. But we also know that just like we've experienced over the last few weeks in our life that random things come into our life that cause desperation. Stuff like sickness. Uh, you hit that doctor's report that says you have a, you have a terminal disease or you, you have a, a child who goes through something very difficult or many people now are experiencing job losses and and just all the upheaval in our culture right now, it's just sometimes these things come out of nowhere and they cause desperation, they cause worry, they cause a feeling of anxiety. And, and so in both of those situations, what can you do? 
Like at the end of the day, what can you do? What do you do when you are feeling desperate? What if you, what do you do if you are desperate? What if you do if you've caused your desperation? Or what if desperation has just found you? Well, a couple of things I think uh, to leave us with today that I think you can do. The first thing that you can do is pursue God. Just like the leper. The leper in the middle of his desperation pursued God. He chased after God. He went to the right source. And so whatever your desperation is today, would you be willing to pursue God? And maybe you feel like it's hopeless in the midst of whatever desperation you feel. You know, there was a man in the Bible in the Old Testament named Job who went through some severe suffering. And in the midst of his suffering, his wife actually says to him in the midst of it, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? It's like, thanks. Thanks, honey. Thanks a lot. That's very helpful. But she, that was her feeling. She was just like, curse God and die. And Job just decided that in the midst of his desperation, in the midst of his hard times, that he was still going to pursue God. So are you willing to pursue God in the midst of your desperation? And then the second thing is this, is that you invite God in to your desperation. The leper said, are you willing? The, the leper is asking God. He is asking God into his suffering. He's ask, asking God into his situation. Have you invited God into your life, into the midst of your life, in the midst of any desperate feelings that you're dealing with? You know, we are, uh, we're here in a, a, a beautiful place now. It's quite a contrast from where we just were uh, just before the video. This is Brady's Run Park, and it's just a beautiful reminder that, that there are better times, that there are better times, that we don't have to live in run-down lives, but when we invite God into our lives, that he can make things beautiful out of it. He can restore us to a place of peace, and that we don't, we don't have to be desperate people. And so we invite God in, we pursue God, and then finally what I'd like to leave you with today is that we trust God, that we pursue him we invite him in but we have to learn to trust god we have to learn to trust that god has for us good things uh when my daughter janie was really little she um we were sitting at the kitchen table and she was very small and, and we didn't allow the kids to drink really soft drinks and i was sitting there drinking a coke and she was asking me dad will you give me some coke would would you give me something to drink and i I, I relented. I gave in. I got to tell you, maybe I'm a bad parent, but I relented. But I only gave her like this much. I, I gave her just a little bit. And she looked at that and she took it in her hands and she held it up and she looked at me and she said, Dad, she's like, you gave me so much. You gave me so much. And I was like, oh, Janie, you have no idea. I felt like saying to her, I have so much to give to you as your father and I want to give you good things. But she was satisfied with just that little bit that I gave her. She wouldn't be anymore, just to let you know. She wouldn't be anymore if I gave her that much. But, but we have to learn to trust God. We have to learn that our Father has for us what we need. And He has promised to give us all that we need. Not all that we want, but all that we need. And we have to trust Him. There's a ton of things right now that we cannot control. We can't control... A lot of things that are going to happen. Yes, we can stay home. We can stay away from each other. We can wash our hands a million times. We can hand sanitize them over and over. But there's so much in this we can't control. But what we can control is we can control our thoughts. We can control our attitude. And we can control our actions in the midst of that, midst of this. We control our actions, our attitudes, and our thoughts. But there's a whole lot where we have to trust God. Are you willing to trust God in this season of your life? Because God is the God who rescues those who are desperate. He meets people. He is willing. He is willing to meet us wherever we are. I want to close with a psalm from Psalm chapter 40. One of my favorite bands, U2, made this uh, famous because uh, they turned it into a song. But this is a psalm of David, and this is what he writes in Psalm chapter 40, verse 1 through 3. He says this, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. And he set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. 
He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord. That's a reverence for the Lord. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. David, with these great words about how God lifts him up out of his pit, in his desperation. Jesus did it for the leper. Jesus will do it for you. God will meet us in our hardest places. Let me pray, and then we'll continue in our worship. Father God, we thank you that you were willing to heal the leper. And not only that, you are willing to heal us. You are willing to meet us in our desperation. Whatever we're going through emotionally, relationally, financially, physically, that you can meet us in our place of desperation and bring us out of that pit, out of the miry clay. So God, I pray that whoever's watching this right now, that you would meet them wherever they need, that you, you let them know that you are willing. And I pray they are willing to pursue you and, and chase after you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word and for these words today that speak to us about a God who is willing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Take care. Let's worship together.
That is who you are. That is who.